The sound of pickaxes rang out through an underground tunnel dug by the Glavolu. If Claire's warning was true, then passing anywhere near the Okran tree would potentially put the Glavolu in a situation where they can never win a fight against Claudius and the Magian Empire. Digging a tunnel underneath and entering the Empire walls in a fashion similar to how Luna had planned to sneak some of the Glavolu into the Empire was the best alternative Damar and the rest of the council could think of. Once approved by Neron, the Great Wolf, who led the Glavolu, it was time to get to work. Many, many weeks had passed since the Glavolu began digging, and despite the daunting task, they had made a lot of progress in a short amount of time. It was still difficult to tell how close they had gotten to the Empire, but Neron was willing to continue this process for however long it took to give his people the best chance of success against Claudius. They used different shifts and rotations to make sure that they were working day and night. Not sure how we're supposed to have the strength for battle after all of this, muttered one of the Glavolu as he wiped sweat from his brow. You heard about these new Magian cylinders they made in the Empire, said another, taking a break from digging. If we had those, it would save us a lot of time over here. The other one stopped to take a break too. Some glances from the other harder-working Glavolu did not deter this one from taking a break. A Magian cylinder? What's that? Well, supposedly Sai, the head of Claudius's council, found some Magian with teleportation magic and he's been running all these weird tests on her for years. He made some type of device that harnesses that magic and can teleport people short distances. The other Glavolu laughed. Are you serious? I knew we were a bit out of our league fighting against Claudius. With magic like that, they could just teleport into our forests and catch us by surprise without having to do all of this. The sound of nearby footsteps caused the two Glavolu to get back to work, to the amusement of those giving dirty looks earlier. Neron and Luna turned the corner and passed them, with yet another look coming their way from Luna. The two Glavolu leaders carried their conversation further into the tunnel. We're making better progress than I thought, said Luna. A few more days and we'll be past the Okran tree at least. This better be worth it, said Neron. Each group of Glavolu they passed seemed to work harder at the sight of him. Luna laughed. Still don't believe the fairy? The more I talk to Damar, the more he convinces me, but I do agree it is better to be safe than sorry. I just grow tired of the games, said the great wolf. I want the fighting to begin. As Luna and Neron made the next turn, they heard another Glavolu running up behind them. It was one of the workers from earlier. Sir, sir, you're not going to believe this. Luna and Neron rushed back through the tunnel. What is this? asked Luna. It is weird because we were just talking about it here, but look at this. Luna and Neron looked down at the ground. A black metal casing held a blue liquid within. Some glowing white orbs could be seen going back and forth with tiny particles crackling around it. It's a Magian cylinder. Everyone stop digging, Luna shouted. Do not hit a single one of these. Her warning came a second too late as a Glavolu struck one of the Magian cylinders. Instantly, every Glavolu digging underground was teleported to the surface above. Luna was no longer near Neron, and the Glavolu around her were in a panic. She rushed to get in front of them where most could see her, and she once again shouted to them, Calm down! Regroup! Gather on me! The Glavolu rushed to her side and prepared their weapons and defenses. Far in the distance, Luna could see the Okran tree. That is where Neron appeared. Standing a few feet away from the base of the tree was Claudius. He had his back to Neron and was looking up at the tree. He slowly turned around to face the Glavolu's leader. There was a rare look of concern on Neron's face. You're not surprised to see me, are you? asked Claudius. You're surprised to see the tree. Neron did not say a word. He simply raised his claws, ready to fight. It would appear that we both are not without our number of prophets and seers. Is this not the place of my inevitable victory? the charred ground around the Okran tree, the stage for my triumph, and the future of the Magian Empire. Over my dead body, replied Neron. Claudius took a few more steps toward Neron. An ironic choice of words. I do not know about you, Neron, but I grow weary of prophecies. Is what you have seen enough for me to convince you to change how the story ends? We don't need to walk this path set before us. Together, you and I can break the mold. This doesn't need to end the way they predicted it to end. Instead, we could cast aside our differences, even if temporarily, 
to do what needs to be done. Neron let his guard down and folded his arms. If Claudius wanted him dead, it would have happened already. Let me guess. Stopping the cyborg? Claudius nodded. The two leaders were now within striking distance of each other. The Guavolu were smart to choose you as their leader, so I know that you're aware of what's at stake here. Neither Glavolu nor the Rumans living in Magia can defeat her alone, but together, together we have a chance. Let us ignore this prophecy in favor of the only one that matters. So you don't believe in this one, but you believe in the Iron Prophecy? That some miracle Ruman in Mecca is going to be born with magic like a Magian, and we're supposed to sit here and wait for that to happen with our tails between our legs? If we're going to join forces, then let us join forces and bring the fight to Sybil. Whether I wait around with my people, your people, or all the people, it's still just waiting around. Claudius walked away from Neron, gathering his thoughts before turning back to face him. What would you say if I told you that this rumen we're all waiting for has already arrived? Neron's eyebrows narrowed before he shook his head. You mean to tell me that a mecha-born rumen with Magian magic is already old enough to defeat Sybil? Old enough, strong enough, and already inside the walls of Mecca, per my request, and size manipulation. They were born in Mecca, but their powers brought them here, and now we've sent them back. Something about Claudius's words triggered something in Neron as he became more shocked than before. The Magian you used to make these cylinders. Claudius smiled. Powerful magic, isn't it? Do you believe me that we have a chance to take Ruma back now? I believe you may have thrown away our chance to win. Why send her into Mecca where we can't help her at all? Claudius realized Neron was now considering working together, and for that he was grateful. If we join forces and wage war on Mecca, it will provide that chosen Magian, destined to save our world, enough time to do what needs to be done. Your Glavolu and my Magian Empire will be the distraction she needs. And what a glorious distraction it shall be.